on. Thank you, family and friends, for joining me. And what else? Maria loves to talk. You guys, how you been doing? You've been doing great. You're having fun. You're getting ready for those vacations. You've already been on your vacation. I know a lot of people going on those cruises. Some people going to Italy, Dominican Republic, Mexico, South America, Nigeria, all that good stuff, England. Um, no, we're not going anywhere. We're just going to take a little trip. Simple little easy trip. Hot off the press. Hot off the press. Get you some snacks. I don't know. Turkey sandwich, a salad, a watermelon, some cherries, some ribs. I don't know. Maybe some oxtails and good old gravy and some beans. So, hey, let's go ahead and get on with this video. BC 13. This story is uh, definitely a horror story. Horror, horror. And you know... Y'all know how much I love, this family love horror stories. In fact, I will be bringing to you guys one of my videos that will be upcoming will be about some of the horror movies, uh, movies in general we have recently watched in the last few months that I highly recommend. And some of them that I didn't like that I would like, like to twist it around if it was me that had the money to rewrite it or remake it over. You know, I, I would. Okay. Two badly decomposed bodies found in an 18-wheeler in Northwest Houston res resembled mummies. HPD says, Houston police. Mummies. So we've got mummies. We've got mummies here in Texas. Mummies are not just only in Egypt anymore. We have them in Texas. Okay, so here this is just... Horrible, horrible. The remains of two people were found badly decomposed inside an 18 wheel in Northwest Houston overnight. Officials said they look almost like mummies. Firefighters had to use a ladder truck to get inside the 18 wheeler to get the bodies out. Police have the two uh, people, uh, the police believe the two people may have been living inside the truck. Update on breaking news from overnight. Two bodies were found inside a trailer full of donated clothing. Police believe the man and woman had been there for some time. ABC 13's Courtney Fisher is at the facility in northwest Houston with the very latest. Police don't know how long these people could have been dead in this trailer or what really happened to them. This business stores donated clothing that goes to Houston area thrift stores and they store them in those trailers. A worker explained to me that lately more and more people have been breaking into those trailers and he has a theory about what happened here. Howard Penwright came in as soon as he saw it on the news. Ah, oh, man, it's mind-boggling. Two people dead in a mound of clothes at his donation center. Yeah, it's it been, is. Yeah. It's going to be a tough day. Their bodies found decomposing in a locked trailer. Almost look like mummies, in a way. Police say the people likely cut this hole on top to get in. Howard says they started locking trailers on the property to keep people from stealing stuff. And then people started cutting these holes. This trailer was filled to the top with clothing, Howard says. When you jump in there, it's just like quicksand. You're going to sink down up in there and you probably couldn't say nothing. That's probably why we never heard nobody. Police only came to investigate because a 911 caller said he heard two homeless people at a convenience store talking about two bodies in a trailer. The questions are, who were they? How did they die? And how long ago? In Northwest Houston, Courtney Fisher, ABC 3. Investigators didn't immediately say if there were obvious signs of trauma. They did say the bodies are badly decomposed, so the medical examiner will have to further investigate. Okay, police were called to the scene around midnight. Lieutenant R. Wilkins said it was kind of strange how they found out about the bodies. Listen to this. He said someone at a nearby convenience store overheard they're like me. They might be related to my family because that's how we are. We're nosy. The man overheard a couple of homeless people talking about the two bodies in the back of a truck. 
The person who overheard their conversation called 911, and when first responders arrived at the business, they found a fleet of Purple Heart donation trucks. You guys got something to say about that, and I'm going to bring in the feng shui, or feng shui, uh, the Chinese um, that comes from China. And I really believe in a lot of, at first I used to think that was just weird, almost like superstitious, creepy stuff, but some of that stuff is real. ABC 13 spoke to an employee at the scene who said the trucks are filled with donated clothes that go to value thrift stores. That was our store to go. That was our store. The employee said homeless people cutting holes into the trailers has been ongoing. Okay, so I said he owned it. I think the, the black man worked, worked there was a manager. So these homeless people... Are they using a saw? Are they having electric equipment? So the man said that what happened was when they got in from the top of the truck, they fell down and it hit them like quicksand and they probably wasn't able to, to get up and move and they could have possibly suffocated. So here, this, yeah, this is what he said. When you jump in there, it's just like quicksand. You're going to sink down in there and you probably wouldn't say, couldn't say nothing. That's probably why we never heard nobody, he said. So how did the other people know that there were folks in there unless they got in there? But how did how were they able to get out? Or did they see the people go in there? You guys, this is why we've got a lot of stuff going on and people are running around with knowledge of knowing someone, loved one, is missing, deceased, uh, in the forest, got buried, got drowned, and their lips are just sealed tight. Prayers go out to these people. I, I don't even want to think, imagine what kind of suffering that was, or was it a so slow, long suffering to sit in there and not be able to breathe, not be able to holler and scream for help. No one's out there but you and that other person. And maybe they could have been fighting each other to try to climb up to get to the roof to get out. That's a sad way to go, you guys. So, hey, um, leave me your comments to these poor people at the thrift shop. Oh, you guys, I just keep... What I was going to say with the feng shui, and I don't know if it's the same thing with the fake hair, the wigs, the wigs, the human hair, because I've been seeing women on YouTube saying, I'm not wearing wigs anymore because it's 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 cursed. It's bad luck because they get it from them Indian women who's trying to get rid of the curses and the bad luck, and then you put it on your head, and now you're going to get, you going to inherit the bad luck. Let me stop being messy. Um, I read, and it's been years ago, I don't mind buying. I think that was one of the reasons I stopped going to a lot of the thrift shops like we used to. You know, I know my family members say, as long as we get home and we wash, I'm going to take it to the cleaners. Uh, nah. So the feng shui people are saying these objects, clothes, they carry the person's um, energy, vibes. So whatever type of person that was, especially if that person died of a disease, of, of some kind of terminal illness, and then you go and you're wearing their suit, you're wearing their party dress, you're wearing their shoes. I remember one of my mom's relatives would say, never buy a mirror at a thrift shop, always buy your mirrors brand new. Of course, always buy your undergarments, your little underwears, your bras and whatnot, unless it already have the little tag showing that it's brand new. But y'all got to be careful. And if I have time, I'll put that up where they talk about the in the feng shui about being careful, buying used uh, clothes, used items, secondhand things. Can you imagine, do you think they're going to throw those clothes away, those two mummified bodies, their bodies wasted and rotted in that? Uh, uh, their, um, I don't want to say their waste. They might throw it away. Then they might send it off to Latin America, somewhere to Africa.
to give it to those people and put it in a big, you know how they, they ta tape it or staple it up in that big compact it and just send it off? Gross. Whew, Lordy, again, prayers go out to those people. You guys, again, I want to thank you for joining me. And what else? Maria loves to talk. Stay healthy, happy, and blessed.